So this coming Sunday is Advent 4 and we focus on the Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of Jesus. In our Gospel reading for this coming Sunday from Luke chapter 1 verses 39 to 55, perhaps you recognise the greeting used by Elizabeth when she saw Mary. Blessed are you among women, blessed is the fruit of your womb. The more Catholic among you will have this engraved on your hearts. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. What you may not know is that the phrase, blessed are you among women, has a tradition in our scriptures. For the judge and prophet Deborah proclaimed, Blessed be Jael among women, when Jael killed the captain of an enemy army in order to deliver Israel. Do you know this story from the book of Judges? Jael killed Sisera by driving a tent peg through his head. Talk about slaying the patriarchy. Anyway, Deborah's song includes this identical phrasing to the words of Elizabeth that we find in our Gospel of Luke. And again, in a parallel story in the Apocrypha, Uzziah proclaimed to Judith after she cut off the head of Holofernes, Blessed are you, daughter, among all women on earth. There is a key difference, though. Both Jael and Judith were blessed because God had used them to confound the strong and to deliver God's people, Israel, through their use of trickery and violence. Mary's blessing, in contrast, lies in the fact that through her obedience, she will give birth to the Messiah, the Christ. She will be the God-bearer. So Mary stands in a line of Jewish women used by God in the salvation story of Israel. But her story isn't just about overturning the odds to defeat a wicked king or kill a powerful army captain. It's all about the incarnation, the birth of the Messiah, the salvation of the world and the radical kingdom of God. This is shown so clearly in the verses that follow in Luke, containing what we know as the Magnificat. It is a song that again echoes the words of a famous woman from the Old Testament, this time Hannah, the mother of the prophet Samuel. And the words very powerfully tell us of God's mercy and God's saving acts. They proclaim our salvation and set out the challenges of our gospel. I want to highlight these gospel challenges, for they often tend to get lost at this time of year in the jingle bells and the snowy scenes of our Christmas festivities. This week, I want us to remember that this Magnificat is core to our gospel and therefore to everything that our nativity fulfils and leads up to. Scattering the proud, bringing down the powerful, lifting up the lowly, filling the hungry, sending the rich away empty. So although the Magnificat may jar with our sense of seasonal cheer this week, as followers of Christ lay claim to the challenges that were sung out by Mary, and be inspired by her obedience to do something about the injustice in our world. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Jesus, let us pray. May God, the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son, give you grace to prepare for life eternal. May God, the Son, who comes to us as Judge and Redeemer, reveal to you the path 
from darkness to light. May God the Holy Spirit, by whose working the Virgin Mary conceived the Christ, help you bear the fruits of holiness. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen.